You might be doing a freelance project and you wonder how much would it cost to do it. Therefore, I'm going to share with you three ways to price your Flutter app service, which are first, hourly, second, project-based, and third, value-based. So let's get started. But before we do that, I'm not an expert or an experienced Flutter freelancer. So this is what I gathered from viewing a lot of videos about pricing your Flutter or freelancing prices, whether it's from this person that is called Jonathan Stark and also Chris Doe from the future. So with that said, let's get started with the first one, which is hourly. So this is the easiest way to find how much you cost in commonly found in platforms such as Upwork. However, the thing about hourly is that you would have to compete with a lot of people that are cheaper and faster than you. Moreover, even if you get freelance work that pays you hourly, how fast are you going to do your job as fast as possible or as slow as possible. So this pricing method hourly rewards slower people while faster and efficient people like you are not. In this hourly kind of uh, industry, clients at this area are looking for someone who's always cheaper and faster to do the same work. In my opinion, I would not highly recommend you to use this unless someone is paying you to teach them or to do consultation, which includes asking for advice or strategy. Maybe this is more towards verbal kind of things rather than doing or manually coding. So I believe in this kind of hourly billing, I can actually find people as low as 10 US dollars per hour. So is this the best? So in terms of the client, they will always go for someone who's cheap and this is exactly not in your best interest. So next up, we have project-based pricing. I would say this is similar with hourly based pricing. So instead of charging per hour fee, you charge in one lump sum. Therefore, how do you then price per project? Well, you might look at the requirements of the project and would estimate how long it would take. Then according to the time you estimate, for example, you wanna do a to-do app that probably will take a long time, which takes around two months. So that's how much you would estimate, two months worth of your work. Then with this, you will multiply how would you think you will actually pay yourself as a developer then you will multiply accordingly. So if you think you cost around 4,000 USD per month, and then it will take you around two months of work, then the total cost of creating a to-do app is 8,000 USD. So this is just an estimate, but your projects are around usually the range of a few thousand. So the good thing is that you will get a lump sum of money or maybe you will do an agreement with your client to pay half of the money upfront and half when it's finished. Moreover, if you finish your project early, that means your pricing is actually quite accurate. However, when does that always happen? So the disadvantage of this pricing or project Based pricing is that you might underestimate how long the project is. What if your estimate is wrong? And that means you have to do more work and also more time spent on the project. That means you have underpriced the project. And most of the time, this advantage is not exactly a small disadvantage. It's a huge one because you actually have to do more work than you anticipated. And lastly, the one that I always love to do is value-based pricing. So what does that mean? So I'll give you a simple example. When you buy a shoe, what is the difference between a shoe with no brand and a shoe that has a brand, for example, Nike? The answer is value. You value a shoe that has no brand lesser than something that has a brand. And the thing is, why does some people pay so much money for the shoe? Even if both of the shoes look the same and also have the same quality and such, but just one has a different logo on it because it happens to do with value and the branding of the shoe. And this goes the same with your Flutter services. And this goes much more deeper than that. If you're able to diagnose the problem and you found out that the solution is to build an app for them, then you are on the right track. So if you ask me, I will ask how much money this solution will save or earn them. Meaning that 
if I were to solve this problem, how much does this solution cost in terms of your business? So for example, a store wants an app to get people buying online because most of their customers are actually asking them if they have an app to buy from rather than going to the store. So that's a very good feedback from the customers and the business is actually taking seriously about it. Then you might ask them, how much more do you think you will earn if you were to have this app? And if the person who knows his or her numbers, they will probably give you an estimate of how much they will earn more. They might say $10,000 per month. Then what I will do is that if I were to have an app and it's $10,000 per month, and if you multiply it by 12, that means this app can actually generate a revenue of an additional 120,000 per year. And I will probably ask them, imagine you can earn $120,000, but you only put in 10% of it. Would you invest in it? And I think most of them would say yes. And this would probably be the price of how much the app that I built for them. Then you might be asking, why not actually price $120,000 for them? And the thing is, this is a decision that is not 100% guaranteed. There might be a time where, what if the app actually does not make $120,000? What if it makes less than that or even half of that? Then if the client asks that, I will probably say, what if it actually earns more than 120000 So there is a balance between the risk that I'm putting in and it is 10% of what you expect in return. So if it does more than 120000 I will still charge you 10% of what you expected. If it's less, then that's the risk you are taking. Because most business people or business owners actually knows that every decision has a risk to it. And if they say this is very expensive, and I would say, Yes, it is. Because if you want to solve a huge problem, would you actually put a small solution to it? Or would you actually guarantee or have a better solution to the actual problem? And it might not even be a Flutter app, but that's not the whole point. So in an ideal world, they will probably say yes to it. And usually with using value-based pricing, your clients are usually at around those businesses. They earn six figures per year. So the advantage of this is that these projects are usually high in price and this incentivize you to do the work as soon as possible. There is a timeline, but the thing is, whenever a client will probably want to add new stuff or change this because of the high price, you actually feel good and feel okay to do more or even less work. This is because you are pricing a project that is deriving from the value from what the client thinks rather than the project itself. So this is just a simplified explanation on how value-based pricing works. So if you want to know more about it, you can follow the Future channel to find out more. They teach value-based pricing in detail and even have videos that role play these kind of situations where in the end, it might not be even a Flutter app. It can just be a simple solution that actually solves a huge problem and that's where you're able to charge a high fee due to how much you are able to solve the business problem. Overall, find where you are right now. If you are doing hourly, you might want to explore project or even value-based pricing. And with this information, if you act on it or even do more research on it and actually execute the advice that either I do or maybe other people do on value-based pricing, that's when you're able to earn more. I will highly recommend you not to do hourly pricing, but move towards project or even value-based pricing. And that's where you earn the big bucks as a Flutter freelancer. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down if you want more of this kind of video. So stay safe and all the best. Bye bye. So like I said, please take this advice with a pinch of salt. I'm just sharing what I've learned. I'm not a very good value-based pricing freelancer, but there are other channels like The Future or Jonathan Stark that's able to help you to increase how much you're earning as a freelancer. 40 minutes, that's good.